Hey dummies, this video is extracted from the second game baking episode I published. Game baking used to feature a segment called The Ordeal, where I go over an aspect of programming, game design, or Unity that was relevant to the game I made in its associated episode. I've since decided to cut that segment from future game baking episodes, so I figured it made sense for me to publish them as individual videos in case you're interested in learning. This one's about delegates and events. The Ordeal Let's talk about delegates and events. No, not these kinds of events. These kinds of events. I use these to decouple classes and components. What is decoupling, you may ask? It's when you ensure that two classes are independent of each other, meaning they don't rely on one another to function properly. This keeps your code modular, scalable, and reusable in future projects. Wow. So in this example, the player class is explicitly tied to the rat class. If you want to reuse any of this in another game, you'd need to either bring both of those classes over together, or update the player class to no longer be dependent on the rat class. And if you want more methods to be triggered when call rats is called, then you'd need to add them in there, which not only adds more bloat to the method, but also makes it responsible for more stuff than it should be. The solution to all this? Events and delegates! Or more specifically, the observer, the observer pattern. pattern. That's a 10. Here's what it boils down to. When your class performs a specific action, it broadcasts an event and then moves on with its sad, pathetic little loser of a life. Sorry, got off track there. But yeah, it broadcasts the event, and then any class that is told to listen to that specific event will immediately be triggered when it sees the event. Player no longer relies or depends on the rat or flute classes, and its only job now is to perform the action it is told to perform without worrying whether or not the other classes can or will be able to perform the related actions. So how do you achieve that? You start by writing a delegate, like so. I like to make these static, but it depends on your use case. I'll explain the difference in a bit. Once you have a delegate, you can create a new event, like this. Now, the event keyword here isn't actually necessary, but it adds some useful restrictions, which I'll explain in a minute as well. Now that you have a delegate and an event, you can add your listeners. Here's where the static keywords come into play. Making it static means you can access the delegate from anywhere without having to find the object in the scene or assign the player class as a rat property. And now these two methods will be called whenever the call delegate event is invoked. Of course, there are a couple things you can do to improve this code even further. For example, adding a null check on the invoke method to avoid an error if nothing is subscribed to that event. Another thing you can do is unsubscribe from the event when the object listening to it is disabled or destroyed. Oh, and regarding the event keyword, all that does is make sure that the delegate can't be overwritten and it can't be invoked outside of its parent class. And finally, you could use actions and funks instead of delegates and events for a more streamlined approach. Here's a quick image to showcase the equivalence to using actions and funks. Feel free to pause if you need to read this for reference. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of educational content, please subscribe and stay tuned for Unity Roundtable, an upcoming series where I discuss and teach programming concepts, game design, and Unity-specific tools. And don't forget, if you'd like to join the Army of Dummies, you can do so by supporting me on Patreon. Check out all the links in the description.